Got a wonderful chapter today, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, James, a servant of God. That's what you need to be is a servant of God. People say, what can God do for me? What can you do for God, huh? <laughs> He's already done it all for you. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Yeah, a servant of God. A servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Well, that's the 12 tribes of Israel, but it's for you and I too. Just remember that. The Bible's for everybody. It's not just for 12 tribes. It's not just for Jews. It's not just for this. It's not just for that. For everybody. Verse 2. My brethren... Now, what this is, uh, this is written to Christians. This is called an epistle. It's a letter, okay? It's written to Christians. How many of you are Christians here? Well, it's written to you then. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Uh, when you ride down the street, uh, fellas, when you ride down the street and you look over and you see some Jezebel, uh, Dressed in modestly. See, I try to ask the ladies come in here or tell ladies to dress dress modestly. Yeah, dress modestly. Yeah. With shame face in this sense, sobriety. Not like Jezebel. See, a woman, when a woman comes into church or comes in anywhere or walks down the street, uh, she, uh, she, not, she shouldn't gather attention because of her figure or, or her demeanor or how she's acting. That's right. Uh, she should just be uh, simple and and covered properly. Amen. Count it all joy when you fall in a diver's tent. When Jezebel walking down Ridgewood uh, and, and, and she catches your eye, don't go like this. Crash into telephone pole. Huh? Any of you guys ever done that in your life? No, I just Get your hand up. At least, at least. Please, get your hand up, Billy Joe. Get your hand up, David. Get your hand up, Roger. Get your hand up, Big Mike. Get your hand up, James. Get your hand up, Gary. He had his he had his hand up. First one had his hand up. Honest. Calvin, he's honest. What, Roger? Oh, you got your hand up? Good. I know you are. Hey, listen, I know more about you than you you think. God knows more about you than I know, but I know more about you than you think. Oh, Lord, and and it's, it ain't so good, you know some of it. Huh? You really know all that about me? I know more than you think I do. <laughs> <laughs> My brother caught it all joy. When you fall to die, here comes Jezebel. And she's looking good, and you catch her to the side of your eye, and you just, just focus on the road. And say, well, glory God that I've fallen into this temptation and I'll beat it. You know, there's nothing nothing greater than to have a temptation and beat it. Have you found that? And there's nothing worse than have a temptation and lust after it. It's going to tell us about this here in James. Just wait up. We're good to get there right now. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience. All right. One thing I, I lack is patience. How many of you are like me? You got problems with patience. You do that? Well, all, all, all of us, all of us. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Well, that's the way Jesus is. I got to try to be like him. Amen. How, how many of you try to be like Jesus? I do. But you know, I fall short. You fall short too sometimes? Let's keep working at it, eh? Jesus said, be ye perfect as I is perfect. You ain't going to be perfect like him till you're in heaven, but you can be working at it, amen? Sure. How many of you got some work to do on yourself like I do? Oh, come I on. I yeah, come on. Let patience work. have a perfect work, that you may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Yeah, okay. Verse 5, James 1. If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Giveth to all men liberally. You want wisdom? Ask. Uh, who asked for wisdom over wealth in the Bible? Huh? Solomon. Solomon, that's it. Solomon. Yeah. Then they lack wisdom. Solomon asked. 
He asked for wisdom. He gave him gold, silver, and give him everything in the world. The thing he didn't give him, what he took of his world of nature, was a bunch of wives. Yeah. About 600 and 300 substitutes. God, Bible says one's enough. You don't need no more, just one. Huh? Uh, Gary said he had one wife. He got rid of her. He never going to get another one. That's what Gary said. <laughs> he said he learned his lesson. You're a very wise man. <laughs> Gary's a very wise man. Imagine that 600 times over. Better lack wisdom. Let him ask of God that he give to all men liberally and upbraided not. And he shall be given him. Ask and it shall be given you. Amen. Seek and ye shall find. Knock. It'll be open. It'll be open. April 4th, 1969, I says, Lord, I'm a no good stinking sinner. Would you save me? Well, glory, he saved me. You got to get in the saved day. If you don't, you're going to hell. Amen. But let us ask in faith, faith, faith. Faith is the substance of things asked for and evidence of things not seen. We just looked at it. We just finished Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. James made a very interesting statement when we were talking about James, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, about the faith chapter. He says it mentioned, Samson, it mentioned Samson in there about his faith, but, you know, everybody always worried about uh, his wickedness. And he had some wickedness, like you and I, yeah. and like David, and like others. But look at here. Right in the same verse that David was mentioned, and who was a great sinner too, you know, murder and adultery. Oh, yeah. Samson was mentioned. David brought that up in a Sunday school on Sunday morning. I, that was a good thing that you brought that up. I, I appreciate that, James. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. See, Samson know how to ask in faith. He got power, man. He slew a thousand men with a jawbone of a donkey. Yeah. That's a pretty tough dude, I mean. Yeah, I mean, these weren't just sissies. These were soldiers. <laughs> Armed soldiers, he killed a thousand of them yeah. with a jawbone of a donkey. Make donkeys out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> he that wavereth, that's you, is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind Amen. and tossed. Like you see the hurricane down here, you went down there to look at the hurricane. How many went down the ocean to look at that wind? Did you go? I looked. I looked, yeah. You know it like me. I went down there looking at the ocean. Some guy come crash into my van. <laughs> He was looking, crashing inside of me. That's why I got that loader car out here. Huh? He was looking at the ocean, too. Yeah, he was. Now, here, listen to this to verse 7. Listen, look at verse 7. You got it? 7, James 1, 7. For let no man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. It says, uh, no, I'm sorry. But let him ask in faith, wait, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave. So if you're if you're like the wave wavering, let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Uh, you know what Lord's going to give you? Your wavering man, double man that don't have proper faith. You know what you know what you get from God? Nothing, 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 nothing. Look what the Bible said. People all the time, every day of my life, someone tell me, "Well, you know, Pastor." I'm just a sinner, and God's going to forgive me, and everything's okay. No, it ain't not unless you hit this altar. altar yeah. And not unless you repent. Ain't nothing going to be okay. No. You know what you're going to get from God? Nothing! Nothing. God help you. Here's you. A double-minded man or woman. A double-minded man. Listen, a double-minded man or woman like you are out there in the viewing audience and here in church is unstable. And all that's why you're so unstable. You're like a termite in a yo-yo. You don't know if you're going up or down. Yeah. Unstable. Have faith. Faith in God. You have to fear nothing. Fear nothing or nobody. You just get right with God and hit an old-fashioned altar. Amen. Don't have to be up here. Could be at your bedside or yeah. wherever. Double-minded man or woman is unstable and all that. Don't forget that. You come to me all the time. People say, well, I wonder why I'm so unstable. Because you're double-minded. That's right. You've got to be focused. 
focused on God. Amen. Your petty little hatreds and wickedness and evil thoughts. Get rid of them. Focus. Focus. Focus on God. Amen. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Who does God exalt? Low degree. That's the last. That's the humble. I get so tired of Christians coming around me telling me how great they are. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Someone comes in my door. I never met him before. Start telling me how what a great Christian they are. I'm very leery of that person. I am a very leery of them. Someone going to try to uh, toot his own horn. Because <clears throat> you know what he's showing? He's proud and arrogant. That's what he is. <clears throat> you want to toot your own horn tell everybody who you are? You ain't nobody but a piece of dirt. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Who exalted? <clears throat> you know what you have to do to be exalted by God? Humble yourself. You'll never be humble. You'll never be exalted of God unless you humble yourself. Right. Once we have a little success, maybe win a few souls or have a few victories in my life, we get all puffed up and proud. Look out! Look out. Verse 10. But the rich in that he is made low. A rich man's got to come in low. Uh, you know why most every rich man going to hell? They won't get low. Huh? Right. Love of money is the love of, the root of all evil. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, verse 11, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away. And there it is. There you go. I know some rich men in this city. I don't cater to none of them. Some of them give me money. Some of them, I know they didn't give me no money. I don't care if they do or not. I tell them they're going to hell. They better get saved. I tell them in person. I, 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 went, I went to a rich man just the other day. And on purpose, I says, I went to his place where he, what he owns. And I said, and he's usually never there. I says, bring him here. I want to tell him you're going to hell and he needs to be saved. You know what? <laughs> God brought him right up to my window. <laughs> right up to my window. And I says, boy, I really wanted to talk to you. Oh, what is it? He thought he was going to ask him something. I says, you're going to hell and I, I don't want you to go to hell. I said, I pray for you every day. You need to get saved. Well, I'm glad you pray. Yeah, you need to get saved. His brother's a preacher. I said, you need to get saved. Amen. I'm praying, why don't you get saved today? Well, nice seeing you. I got to go. There goes Mr. Big Bucks going to hell. He, he might watch this. I don't know. I'll send it to him. <laughs> Blessed is the man. <laughs> That endureth temptation. Don't it just kill you every time you yield to temptation, Christian? Don't it? Does it do it? it? It kills me. Does it do it to you too? Does it kill you when you yield to temptation? Come on, does it? Am I the only honest man in the building? Yeah. Isn't it terrible when we temptation and we know what to do right? We do wrong! Amen. That's right. Isn't that terrible? Don't you just feel terrible as a child of God when, when the Bible says this? Y'all memorize it. First Corinthians ten thirteen. There's no temptation taking man, but it's, there's no no temptation taking you. Yeah. It is common to man, and God is faithful, and will not suffer a man to be tempted above which he is able, but will with temptation make a way. You can't blame nobody else. God's made a way of escape, but you haven't taken it. A true born again child of God washed in the blood. No reason for you to sin but you. Well, I've had a bad environment. Who hasn't? You live in this wicked world like we all do. You live in a bad environment, amen? <laughs> there's, but, there's enough wickedness floating around out here for all of us plus, huh? Oh, we get tempted and we we don't yield to, yield not to temptation. You know that song? No. <laughs> Verse 
Let no man say when he is tempted, verse 13, I'm tempted with God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Hear it? Neither tempted he any man. All right, here, listen, verse 14, look at it, mark it down, memorize it. But every man or woman is tempted when he or she is drawn away of their own lust and enticed. It's my wicked, sinful devil's nature. Drawn away. Lust. And enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You know what that is? Hell. Hellfire. You better wake up. You better wake up. You better hit the altar. You better repent. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Threaten this to Christians. A lot of unsaved people in the church. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Oh, that's the heavenly Father. <laughs> Father of lights. Well, glory. I hope you're hearing all this, Dennis, while you're over there cooking. With whom is no variable, neither shadow of turning. God don't turn to this side or that side. He's right there. Every time. Always on the mark. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you, aren't you got a God that never changes? Aren't you glad? I was thinking now. I helped a guy, I helped a guy get a church 30 years ago. Followed it with him. Made the bylaws, Constitution, independent, fundamental, King James, Bible believing church. He just resigned the church. It's altogether different than when we started. When I helped him, I helped I helped him start that church. If I didn't help him, he'd never pastored that church. It's so far away now. I'm ashamed of the church today. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of him. I'm ashamed of the statements he made when he resigned his church. Because he's so far afield of what the truth is. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I've been rock solid. I didn't say I've been sinless. But I believe what I did 30 years ago. And when I founded the credentials. And, and, and the statement of faith and helped that man get that church 30 years ago. He's far afield from it. I believe exactly the way I helped him start that church, in it, but he's far away from it. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of him. Man. Resigned the church. I hate to see it. I don't know why people do that. Are they saved? I don't know. If they are, they're backslidden bad. I don't know. Huh. Let no man say, he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse 14, for every man is tempted or woman, when they are drawn away of their own lusts and enticed. And when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variable. He's right on it. He's right on Always right. Always right. I want to be right. I want to be like I am. I'm not changed. I thank God when I got people that, that send me a text or send me an email and say, Brother Varga, I listened to your sermon today, and it's just exactly what it was 40 years ago. I say, well, Glory. You almost preached the same message as 40 years ago. A few different illustrations. That, well, glory. I have been moved. I've been on track. Verse 18, of his own will begot us with the word of truth. Where's the word of truth? King James Bible. Amen. Throw away the other garbage you got. Amen. Well, what about New King? It's garbage. King James Bible, 1611. That we should be a a kind of first fruits of every Christian. Verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, 
James loved the church like Paul did, like all Christians do, like Jesus does. Call them beloved brethren. That's the fellowship of the saints, amen? amen? That's a different crew. That's real church. My beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Yeah. Boy, if there's anybody need that verse, it's me. Yeah. You do too, Brother Mike. Yeah. So do you, Roger. So do you, Billy Joe. <laughs> everybody in here needs it. Me most than anybody. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Shut up and listen. Huh? That's what it's saying. <laughs> how many of you, how many of you like me, many times in your life you wish you'd have kept your mouth shut and listened? Huh? Yeah. Huh? I'm home. Amen. Verse 20, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness. My wrath don't work the righteousness. Oh, the righteous indignation. I'll oh, shut up. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You let God take care of things. Right. Keep your big mouth shut. And humble yourself, huh? Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, we know it all. But we know more than God. You know, God said, "Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay." You know, if you try to take vengeance, then God will work them over. But He ain't gonna if you try to get involved in it. You know what I'm talking about? That's what the Bible says. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. How many of you got some filthiness you got to lay apart from in your life? Come on, huh? Come on, huh? Yeah, yeah. Filthiness. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. That means superfluity means super naughtiness. <laughs> superfluity, big word. <laughs> naughtiness. And receive... And receive with meekness. You know what meekness is? Humility. It's so hard to be humble. I had a friend of mine. He helped me a lot. His name was Roger Boyce. He's still alive. He's 90-some years old. He lived in California. Rich man. I believe he's still rich. He always told me I was his pastor. I don't know if he's saying. He always say this. He said, Pastor Varga, he says, it's very hard for me to be humble when I'm so great. And he meant it. Maybe that's your problem. Some people don't need Christ. They don't need a Savior because they're good enough on their own. No, you ain't good for nothing. You, you lousy, stinking sinner like me. And receive with meekness the engrafted word. That's the Bible engrafted to your heart. Yeah. Meekness, humility. That's my downfall. It's yours too. Got a bunch of big shots. God's the only big shot. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. You want to humble yourself. You, you can't be saved. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Verse 22. This will get you. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. Isn't that a mouthful, huh? Do the word. I got people can fluently tell me God's promises and blow hard and blow hard, but they don't live it. Huh? They just blow out of a hot air. Huh? Amen. Sometimes we got too much hot air and not enough reality. Huh? Amen? Right. You ever done that? Come on. Uh, yo! Yeah! Verse 23, 4, Fanny be a hearer. Of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. No good stinking sinner. Yeah. Remember who you are. You ain't nothing. Right. But, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the Bible. The perfect law of liberty is the Bible. And continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the I have people who read the Bible, they talk, oh, that's so wonderful. They turn right around, and 10 minutes later, they're doing something against the Bible. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. You've been there, done that. Some of you have. I have. I have, too. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to say. Yeah. Be not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. 
This man shall be blessed. I don't know about you. I want the blessing. How many want the blessing? Amen. We better humble ourselves and get with the Bible. Amen. Yeah. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, that's a whole new subject. Amen. Boy, deceive his own heart. This man's religion is vain. You can't keep your big mouth shut. You got big trouble. I don't know about you. How many of you got some big mouth trouble like I do? Religion in vain. Verse 27. Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this. He says God and the Father. That means there's more than one person in the Godhead. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It says God and the Father. So Jesus is God and the Holy Ghost is God too. Triune God. Amen. How many believe in the Trinity God? Amen. If you don't, you're going to hell. To visit the fatherless and widows in all their afflictions. Take care of people who have need. Widows and fatherless, uh, poor kids, they got nothing. I remember, I can't ever think about but cry. <laughs> My wife and I in, in Milwaukee, we had a giant Sunday school. And at Christmas time, we filled up that van with toys for the children and turkey and things, you know, at Christmas time. And we go out on the bus ride. I tell the bus captains, I says, you, you find me the poorest children. <laughs> you find me the poorest children. Don't you, because they're your favorite, you like them. I says, I want to... I want the poorest family on your route. We had 20 some bus routes. We had several thousand kids in Sunday school. I said, I want the poorest family that you got on your bus route. They had their own little ministry, their own bus route. I said, you bring me their address and I'm gonna make a, tell me how many children are in there, if they're boys or girls. I had special things made up for them. <laughs> and I go to them houses. I go in the house and they ain't got a bit of furniture in the house. And I ask, where are you? And the children say, we're over here. <laughs> this time of year. And I go in the bedroom. And there's four or five little poor children on a bed with no sheets on it, nothing, just a mattress. Huddled together in the winter cold house. I brought up toys. <laughs> All kinds of people like that. Nobody cares. I thank you, brother. I thank you. Nobody for that. cares. I thank you for that. Nobody cares. I thank you for being good to the children. Pure religion, devout. Visit the fatherless and with us in their affliction. I went to the poor little children and told about Jesus. They already, most of them already been saved. A lot of them preachers now and good Christians all over the country. I can't go back to Milwaukee, but I meet people that are grown now that got saved in a Sunday school. Poor little children on, on the bed, no sheets, no furniture, no Christmas tree, no nothing. Just what we brought them, that's it. They're actually the poorest of the poor in Milwaukee. The very poorest of the poor. But God loves them. And he told me to go to him. <laughs> Visit the problems. Thank you, brother. And but look at the last part. I was able to do that personally to a lot of children, hundreds of children. But look at the last part. We can all do this. Listen, look at it. The last verse of chapter one. And keep keep himself or herself unspotted from the world. You can do that. You might not have the privilege of doing like I did to be able to search out the very poorest people in the city and take them things for Christmas and love them, tell them about Jesus. Amen. But you can keep yourself unspotted from the world, huh? Huh? Right. Do you want to be unspotted from the world? Yes. You love your pornography. You love your alcohol. You love your other drugs. You 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 love you love your, hit, your wickedness. It says, "Keep himself or herself unspotted from the world." 
Anybody got any spots here? Any spotted people here? Yeah, we all are. Let's get rid of them. Amen. Get rid of them spots. Amen. Stay unspotted from the world. God help us. I'm so happy that I was able to visit the fatherless and do a little something for him. Best of all, I tell about Jesus. God bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation, so rich. And sing it, church. Sing it, church. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation, so rich and free. Lord, save that sinner near his tail here in the church, out in the viewing audience. Thank you for those precious little wonderful children that my wife and I could bring things at Christmas time and the I didn't do the work. I, I had the blessing of taking them to them. It's those bus captains that did all the work, visiting them every week, every Saturday, bringing them to church, getting them saved, taking them shoes all during the year, not just on Christmas. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glad I'm saved. I hope you're saved. Amen. If you're not, pray the sinner's prayer with them. You know if you're saved or not here in church and out there. Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't know you're saved. Pray this prayer with me, dear Lord. I don't know you died for me and shed your precious blood. You rose again the third day from the grave. And the best I know how, with an honest heart, I right now, I turn from my sins. I receive Jesus Christ to be my Savior and my only hope of a home in heaven. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Amen.